All right, good morning, everyone. I'd like to call to order the Judicial and Public Safety Committee of uh, DuPage County. Uh, before we get started, I, uh, I'll make a motion to allow we have Member Schwarzy and Member Desart have requested to participate remotely due to illness. I made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Um, you are allowed to participate remotely. With that, I'll do a roll call, please. Chair Renahan. Here. Member Chaplin. Here. Member Covert. Member Desart. Here. Member Eka. Member Garcia. Here. Member Kajewski. Here. Ozog. Here. Member Pachowski. Member Schwarzy. Here. Member Salman. Okay. All right, great, thank you. Do we have any public comment? All right, great, thank you. <clears throat> so good morning, everyone. Um, this is the first time our board has met since the tragic mass shooting in Uvalde. And as it happened um, at that time, we were actually all gathered together at the county board meeting. Um, so I think it's appropriate, and I would like to open this morning to have a moment of silence to honor the 21 innocent victims who lost their lives that day, and all victims of gun violence in this country. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to the agenda, um, I'd like to welcome back Kimberly Verest, Arbitration Administrator for the 18th Judicial Circuit. Um, she'll provide us with an eviction mediation program progress report and the important work being done to support landlords and tenants during difficult circumstances caused by COVID. So thank you for your attendance and uh, all you do. And thank you to our partners in community services, uh, the court and uh, Prairie State Legal Aid. We'll be hearing about that later today. So um, for our committee's information, um, as we know, the HOPE Task Force reports to the chairman through JPS. And I'd like to thank uh, Member Schwarzy for, for for providing an article that was handed out this morning about the pieces of legislation to uh, enhance the fight on opioids and to support those suffering with substance abuse disorder. So great for us to all keep abreast of that information. Um, finally, um, I have to mention one more time, our JPS Administrator Erin Leck, we're gonna miss, miss her very much. I bet she's listening today. Hi, Erin. Um, and as mentioned, she's headed to Tennessee to pursue her master's in teaching. So. Um, she had a nice send off by our OHSEM director Diekman and staff last week. So, and I'd like to welcome Sally Carner very much. Thanks for taking over the position and let's talk slow on our, in our motions and seconds um, to help her get up to speed on that. So anyway, um, with that, I will take a motion to approve the minutes of May 17th, 2022. Motion and a second, all in favor? That passes. Moving on to procurement, I'll take a motion on JPSP 0177-22, recommendation for approval of contract to justice text for the purchase of audiovisual evidence management software licenses July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023 for the public defender's office, not to exceed 40,000. Motion and a second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion to approve JPSP 0179-22, contract purchase order to Motorola Solutions for seven watch guard in-car camera systems, evidence storage, and support for inmate transportation vans, not to exceed $50,095 for the sheriff. Second, questions here? All in favor? Aye. Opposed, that passes. <clears throat> I'll take a motion to combine items 6, C, D, and E. These are all contracts for laptop and computer accessories for the circuit court clerk um, purchased under in, uh, governmental co-op purchasing. A motion and a second to combine those items. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great, thank you. Those are approved, uh, combined. I'll take a motion to approve JPSP 0180-22, purchase order to SHI International Corp for laptops and computer accessories, June 14th, 2022 through June 13th, 2023, 55,000 for the circuit court ARPA. Uh, item D, JPSP 0181-22, uh, this is to Insight Public Sector, also for laptops, computer accessories, June 14, 2022 through June 13, 2023, 55,000 circuit court clerk ARPA. And 6E JPSP 0182-22, this is with CDW, 
5,000, June 14, 2022 through June 13, 2023, Circuit Court Clerk, ARPA. Uh, Member Kujewski? Do we buy last house from three different vendors? Oh, we have somebody here to, to address why we have three vendors. <laughs> Morning, board members. Uh, to answer that question, currently with today's supply chain issues, we have elected to utilize three Omnia contracts that will allow us to purchase at any given time from any of the three due to the supply chain issues. Uh, one vendor may not have what we need at that moment. So this gives us flexibility to reach out to two other vendors and get exactly what we need. So are we only buying 55,000 total, but we got three different contracts so we can get it from any of the three? No, the way that that set is set up is that we can, uh, it is an uh, estimated quantity so that we're not anticipating using the full amount, but we could if we needed. So, so what's the amount we're really looking to spend? Uh, defer to the department. I mean, my issue, my issue becomes, I mean, if it's because of supply chain issues and we need 75,000 or 100 and one has it and one doesn't, we're limited to only 55 with the one that we did it with. Yeah, we are looking for about 100 laptops, which is in the ballpark of $150,000 total. Um, and, you know, if it ends up being that we are unable to buy all those because we filled up one particular vendor or another, we'll have to react at that time. Well, the if we need 150000 worth of laptops, and we just did three different contracts at only 50000 for each, or 55000 for each one, one may have them more and one may not. And you come back, I guess. Was? Yeah, that's that was the plan. Madam Chair, I'd like to recognize um, our IT chair is here, Member Salmon. Hi, thank you. I know we've had this discussion in finance and in county board. This is the same methodology we use in tech. Um, unfortunately, since a little before March of 2020, as we saw the pandemic starting in other parts of the world, not just supply chain and staffing issues that we've seen here, but parts. Um, so our IT department has done the same thing. Our last time we put out a big contract for replacement equipment, we had three vendors so that we could get the soonest availability. Um, so I'm glad that you guys are using sort of a tried and true method here. No, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay with the three vendors because of supply chain issues, but if the total we're buying is 150 and we now split it between three, shouldn't these numbers maybe be a hundred grand per vendor? If we're looking at supply chain issues where one may have some and one may not, but if we're looking to buy 150,000 total and we've only got about 165 with this, shouldn't, shouldn't these not exceed be higher? Isn't that under the, just, this is an elected official, Sir Court Clerk. I mean, isn't that under her discretion how she wants to bring that forth? Well, well, All right, do you have any more questions on this? I do. Oh, member to start. Thank you. I had the same questions that member Krajewski had about this $165,000 with all three of these contracts. And it seemed a little weird to me that each one was exactly $55,000. But um, putting that aside, um, how many ARPA dollars have already been spent at the circuit court? ARPA or CARES Act dollars have been spent at the circuit court for new computers? Because it seems like we just approved um, funding for computers for the circuit court not too long ago. So my question is, how many ARPA and CARES Act dollars have already been approved for new computers and computer equipment for the circuit court? Okay. We have, I guess we could ask, is there anyone here from the circuit court? However, this is uh, to make the distinction, the circuit court clerk's request. Yeah, I would just to answer that question, Member Desart, I don't recall exactly what we may or may not have spent previously on ARPA funded equipment but nothing comes to mind. I, I don't think we had a recent uh, procurement with ARP dollars for equipment. All right, Jason Blum. <laughs> Nick there, does Nick recall? Uh, yeah, Nick's coming up. Yeah, I, I will verify, but I think he is correct as far as uh, computer and computer equipment. I mean, there might've been um, audio visual, things like that, but I don't think there's been a, a hard computer purchase. I will tell you as far as what we found out for computer purchases for the, the reason for the three, I don't see a problem right away because the, the supply chain is so weak with, uh, with laptops out there. When they find two or three, that's a lot. 
So by the time that there's a problem with these contracts, they can easily bring it back. And the pricing among the three Omnia contracts is pretty close. So there really isn't a, a concern. And it's not like they're going to find 100 laptops with one of the vendors. They're going to find three, four, five at most. And then by the time that it kind of gets it close to it, they can come back to JPS and, and finance or board to change the allocation from one to the other. So I don't think that there would be a problem with, you know, all of a sudden there's 100 available, what do we do? But if, if that does arise, I will tell you that IT as kind of the, the, the agency overseeing it has more purchase capability than this. So there are even options that are available to the county if we do run into that problem. All right, great. Do we have any more questions on this item? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, great, great. Those pass. Um, I'll take a motion to approve item 2022-54, recommendation for approval of contract purchase order to C5 Solutions to upgrade PCMS to Chrome from Internet Explorer so June 8, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. Now it takes $18,525 for probate and court service. We had a motion and a second. Um, questions here? All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? That passes. Moving on to resolutions. I'll take a motion to approve JPSP 0176-22 contract purchase order to Dur Graphics and Custom Filing to provide 2023 case file system for the circuit court clerk, June 23rd, 2022 through June 22nd, 2023, not to exceed $34,153.89. Motion and a second. Questions here? All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion to approve FIR-0227-22, Resolution Acceptance and Appropriation of Coroner Certificate B Grant, FY 2022, 5,130 for the coroner. Questions here? All in favor? Any opposed? That passes. Let's take a motion to approve FIR-0226-22, Resolution Additional Appropriation of the Stop School Violence Program, FY19 Grant, uh, $62,525 for the sheriff. A motion and a second. Questions here? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion to approve FIR-0228-22, Resolution Additional Appropriation for County Infrastructure Fund. Uh, <clears throat> this is additional costs related to the mobile command post, $20,580 for the Sheriff's Office. We have a motion and a second. Um, I think we have Deputy Chief Billadu on the line. Good morning, everybody. Um, could you just fill us in as to why there's there's an increase here? It's kind of an interesting. I can. So good morning, everyone. Thank you again for the initial approval of this purchase. What happened was, is once the procurement went through to the vendor LDV, uh, they sent back an email to myself at the procurement saying they did not believe they would be able to get that chassis by the end of the purchase order, which was May of 2023. So just like you guys were talking about with supply chain issues with the computers, there's supply chain issues with trucks. So they did have a chassis available for us that it was on the lot there. Uh, the reason for the cost increase is it went from a single axle truck chassis to a tandem axle, which is actually about three feet bigger. And that also makes the box inside on the top of the truck three feet bigger. So it's gonna give us a lot more working room inside and it'll get us the truck this year. So it was just a matter of they had that supply available and I had to come back and ask you one more time for funding for this command post to meet that supply. Madam Chair? Uh, member to start. Thank you. Yeah, I had this uh, item flagged um, under the change order um, 9A, but you know, and I see that it's based on the availability of a chassis, but it just seems very strange that we approved this one month ago. We approved this on May 3rd. And all of a sudden, it's, I don't understand how um, LDV could give us one price and then just one month later, um, up the price by $20,000 just because of a chassis. It's only been one month since we approved this. Uh, they didn't up the price on the chassis in one month. They did. They had chassis a month ago. They would not hold a chassis for us based on if the county was going to approve it or not. Another buyer came in, bought the chassis they had available and their supply chains that they did not have a single axle supply available till possibly May of 23, maybe even later. All right. 
Yeah, I, I had the same questions. It does seem a matter of timing, supply chain. And I guess the benefit is, as uh, Deputy uh, Chief said, you know, it is a longer vehicle. There's gonna be more room, you know, more capacity. So I think there's, there is some upside. Any other questions here? All right, all in favor? Aye. That passes. Uh, moving on to budget transfers on uh, 8A, I'll take a motion uh, to approve uh, $200,200 due to unforeseen expenses in the sheriff's office, cost repairing vehicles, and placing outdated equipment have increased due to shortages of parts, communication costs were budgeted lower as services were anticipated to be contracted out, but now are being updated internally. You have a motion? Motion and a second. Questions here? Member Kajewski. I'll, I'll defer to Member Chaplin. Member Chaplin. You know, I was just going to say, I just don't understand how, um, like, unforeseen expenses are outdated equipment and vehicle repairs. Um, I guess maybe because due to shortages of parts, but um, I hope that we're keeping inventory and that we're not, you know, just coming willy nilly and saying, oh, this is, we didn't realize this was old or new, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know that necessarily it should be um, categorized as an unforeseen expense. This looks like regular maintenance in some instances. I could be wrong, but just saying so. Member Huchewski? Mine was more of a general comment, but it appears we're just, I mean, we've got these unforeseen expenses, so we're moving money from other parts of the budget to cover these expenses. And so this is not only regarding the sheriff, but also maybe campus-wide. Uh, the question becomes six months down the road, are we going to be coming back because now these monies we just took out of these, whether it's um, medical, dental, lab supplies, repair, we're moving money from there to cover these costs. Now we're going to need to move money somewhere else to cover the, the costs we just took money out of. Um, and it's a campus-wide issue too. We're hearing these supply chain issues and stuff and maybe we just need to relook at some of the departments and maybe we need to put more money in for some of these unforeseen costs that are coming up because it sounds like staff maybe might spend a lot of time i need to get this today because i need it but so i'll pull it out of these other funds within my department because i'm maybe not running there yet and i'll put it over here but then now these come october november or short um, so it may be just an issue maybe campus why we need to look at yeah, I, I I agree with you on this. I mean, we see so many budget transfers and so many of them do seem things that probably could have been prevented beforehand with better budgeting to begin with. So I, I share a concern. Um, any other comments here? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Uh, I'll take a motion on 8B, also budget transfers. This is 40. $42,558 for the Sheriff's Office. Funds placed in professional services line are needed in a variety of other lines to ensure proper billing and coding. Repair and maintenance categories had cost increases due to supply issues and age of equipment still in service. I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Questions or comments here? Yeah, I would just reiterate the comments that we just had in the last, you know, we're seeing a lot. Granted, I will say the Sheriff's Office does have our largest budget of, you know, any other office, but um, just to be noted for the record. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. I'll take a motion on 8C, budget transfers. Uh, this is also for the Sheriff's Office, $53,095 for the purchase of seven watch guard in camera, in, I'm sorry, in-car camera systems, evidence storage and support for inmate transport. Do I have a motion? A second, motion and second. Questions here? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That passes. 9A, we have a change order. I'll take a motion and recommendation for approval of an amendment to resolution JPSP 052-22, amending purchase order 5822-0001 uh, to LDV. This is the mobile command post we just spoke about for the Sheriff's Office in Merritt. The change is $20,580. 20, I'm sorry, who was the motion? And a second. Questions or comments? All in yeah. favor? Oh, I'm sorry, members, sorry. Thank you. I'm really uncomfortable with this. As I said earlier, when we were talking about it, I mean, it's, can I have somebody from camera please call me before this goes to county board next week? Because it seems to me we got a quote for a vehicle where a chassis was kind of an in integral part of the vehicle. And it's like, if I went to a dealership to buy a car and then a month later, they told me that the steering wheel was going to be extra because they were short on steering wheels. This just doesn't sound right to me. So Whoever um, is in charge of procuring this item, would you please give me a call today? 
Um, I'm, my last meeting's at 10, so I'll be available after that, but I'm just not comfortable with this item at all. Okay, well, um, we can do that, no problem. Jason is, is nodding. <laughs> all right, um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? That passes. Uh, moving on to consent items, I'll take a motion to combine uh, change order at 10A, change order at B and C. Um, those are all decrease and close. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Those are combined. I'll take a motion to approve 10A change order county contract 5229-0001 issued AT&T mobility decreasing by 26,000 and close. 10B county county contract 4437-001 Tritech software systems decrease and close 330,000 for the circuit court clerk. 10C county contract 5082-001 serve to Northeast DuPage family and youth services decrease and close $20,820 for probation. Move. All right, all in favor? All right. All right. Those are approved. Moving on to grants, I'll take a motion to receive and place on file a GPN 032-22 Family Violence Coordinating Council SFY23 for 9,000 for the cir circuit court. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Any opposed? That's uh, received. I'll take a motion to uh, receive and place on file grant proposal notification GPN 031-22 Victims of Crime Act PY23 80,504 for the State's Attorney Children's Center. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Any opposed? That passes. All right, great. We are now moving on to our presentation. So I would like to welcome Kimberly Verest, our Arbitration Administrator for the 18th Judicial Circuit Court. She's here today with Suzanne Armstrong, our Court Administrator, and we will be hearing about Eviction Mediation Program update. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kimberly Verist. I'm the Alternative Dispute Resolution Administrator for the 18th Judicial Circuit Court. I work for Chief Judge Pope Joy and Suzanne Armstrong in managing the court's alternative dispute resolution programs. It's, I was last before you in September 2021, and I'm here today to provide you with an update on our eviction mediation program. When I last presented, I provided you all with our plans that we had developed, and now we have implemented our plans. We kicked off our program on October 4th, 2021. We've implemented it and now are beginning our ninth month of the program. We've seen wonderful success and I'm excited to tell you about that. Uh, next slide. The eviction mediation, sorry, you can, thank you. The eviction mediation program was designed to help mitigate the surge of evictions resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic and the ensuing economic fallout. Its chief goal is to assist, assist tenants and landlords in avoiding eviction and pursuing mutually beneficial alternatives. The program is designed to aid in the administration of justice by the promotion of judicial efficiency. Next slide. As an overview, our goal is to have landlords and tenants pursue mutually beneficial alternatives. Um, to do so, they are referred first through the summons that we've modified, then in court, then by the Mediation Center to reach out to Prairie State Legal Services for free legal assistance, to DuPage County Community Services for rental and housing assistance, and to the Eviction Mediation Program for Mediation Services. This three-tiered approach is designed to help the parties resolve their disputes without the judge resolving the issue at trial and issuing an eviction. I'll describe to you today the success of all three parts so you can have a full picture of our program. Next slide. First, the eviction mediation program itself has seen wonderful interest and success. Since I was last before you, we completed a two-part mediator training in which we trained 118 individuals. We had 60 applicants and 43 of them were approved as mediators. Um, we are planning to do another training this fall once we update our curriculum or late this summer. The ARPA funds that you allowed us to use have allowed us to hire a program coordinator, Alyssa Fortino, who's essential to our success. Alyssa is from 
was with DuPage County Community Services for nine years prior to coming over to work with us. And she's our frontline contact to all of our tenants, landlords, attorneys, mediators, interested public, and our judges. Alyssa's role is one of many. First, she ensures that every mediation is or that is ordered has a mediator assigned to it, that that mediator is prepared with the background information they need to mediate effectively and efficiently. And we've received overwhelmingly positive feedback from the attorneys who've mediated in our program that and have mediated in other circuits programs that ours is the most efficient and effective. And I believe that's because we have staff to maintain the program and to keep it running. Our average mediation is one hour or less, and our ARPA money is also available, has also been able to allow us to pay mediators, which has allowed us to have a recruited, a seasoned and professional mediators, which I believe also is part of our success. Mm -hmm. Our coordinator ensures that the parties receive their case, the mediated agreement that they received in the case and the mediation report, and that helps make those agreements get to court and to get entered. Next slide. Our coordinator also serves as an on-the-spot help desk for landlords and tenants who have questions about evictions. She can triage them and connect them to our partners at Prairie State Legal Services, as well as uh, DuPage County Community Services if they're interested in housing assistant, assistance. She answers general questions about the mediation program and sets up people who are interested in voluntarily mediating with a mediation appointment. The majority of the questions that our coordinator receives come in through phone and email. About 25 to 40 people per month are using her as a help desk. If anyone needs assistance with Zoom, access to the internet, computer, we have media, uh, can laptops set up in the mediation center and Alyssa can help them as well as she logs on to every Zoom mediation and is there to make sure everyone's in attendance, to call people if they're running late, um, to get everyone started to help anyone if they have technical issues. Um, and then she also serves as making reminder calls, which I believe is also helping us make sure everyone's showing up to it, um, the appointments. Next slide. So far, our program's at a 66.9% success rate, meaning of the cases that are ordered to mediation um, or agreed to mediate voluntarily, 66.9% of them are resulting in, agree in an agreement. Um, they're either resulting a full agreement, partial agreement, temporary agreement, or they settle pre-mediation or post-mediation before going back to the judge. Therefore, the judge is not having to hear these cases at a trial. The AOIC is still collecting stats on the eviction mediation programs across the states, but if they end up comparing the eviction program like they do to the arbitration program, which I've heard is what they're planning to do, um, they'll consider our 66.9% success rate as highly successful. Um, we have had 211 cases go through mediation. 100 of those have reached a full agreement. 14 partial agreements, two temporary agreements, and 19 have settled prior to mediation and three post-mediation. The mediation being scheduled itself is a catalyst to get people to talk to each other and to reach an agreement so they don't have to go to mediation. And so that's why that number is considered a success for alternative dispute resolution. Next slide. Other numbers that highlight our success um, of this program come from our partners at Prairie State and DuPage County Community Services Housing Supports. Every case that they impact is another case that most likely is resolving prior to needing to mediate um, because their legal advice was able to help resolve the issue or the rental assistance funds that they received resolved the issue at hand too. Um, next slide. So as you'll see from this slide, Prairie State Legal Services has had an has been an incredible asset to our program. Since the moratorium lifted on October 4th, 2021, through the end of last week, so this post-moratorium phase, they've assisted 859 DuPage landlord-tenant clients. Um, and then to, pre, to compare that to pre-COVID, pre-moratorium numbers, that same time period that was typical, October 4th, 2018, till June 3rd, 2019, they assisted 527 landlord tenant clients, you can see it's over a 300 um, person increase in that time that they've been able to impact. 
Uh, next slide. Um, another incredible statistic that highlights the success, success of our program comes from our partners at DuPage County Community Services Housing Supports, who've been essential in helping our court connect landlords and tenants to the court-based rental assistance program. Some people call this CB RAP funds. Um, CB RAP provides $25,000 in money to landlords and tenants, and it's been overwhelmingly successful on DuPage in the 18th Circuit. The judges in both eviction courtrooms hand out toolkits to interested parties that we've added a cover letter to the top of that gives them specific local contact, a phone number that people can reach out to from help from community services and filling out the application. We also have two case managers in our courtrooms over Zoom and on person and in person to be able to meet with people on the spot if they have questions or need help not only to apply for CB wrap money, but other funds and assistance programs they may be able to have. Um, this money is available to all counties outside of Cook and DuPage County is number one in the state of Illinois in the number of applications we've had approved and the number of CB wrap funds that have been distributed. Um, DuPage has had 317 approved applications and over $3.4 million dispersed into our community um, to landlords and tenants. For comparison, you can see the next two counties with the highest numbers were St. Clair County with 245 approved applications with $1.5 million distributed, and then Will County with 216 approved applications and $2.2 million distributed. To receive CB wrap money, the tenant uh, must have an active eviction court case. They must have a financial hardship, whether, whether directly or indirectly um, as a result of the pandemic and a 2021 household income below 80% of the area median income adjusted for household size. Uh, you'll see that this three-layered approach to the cases in our eviction courtrooms is so far extremely successful in connecting landlords and tenants with rental assistance funds, legal advice, and mediation services. Thank you so much to the county board for your support of this program, um, the support and hard work of our partners at Prairie State and DuPage County um, Housing Supports, and to the chief judge's office. It was a pleasure to present to you this morning, and if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah. So I remember I was up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm interested in finding out in terms of procedure, it sounds like you're doing a hybrid of Zoom and in person. Do you see that continuing? You know, actually, we've been 100% uh, over Zoom uh, for oh. the mediations. And then the in portion part would be if anyone needs help with Zoom, they can come to the courthouse and actually use our computers in the mediation center. But so far, we're over Zoom, and it's been really well received. Um, and the clients are having, they're not having a problem accessing, you're, you're managing that, so. Yeah, okay. They, we've had very, I mean, you'll have people who can't turn their camera on or don't know where the unmute button is. And, you know, and Alyssa's great. She helps them, like, even the playing field. So before everyone joins, everyone knows what they're doing so that when they come in from the Zoom room, you know, everyone's on a fair footing. Okay. You're not fumbling around in front of the other party you're trying to mediate with. Um, and it's been really well. You know, we get feedback from people that they appreciate not having to take a half day off of work right. or they're in their cars. Um, we've had, it's been really well in terms of confidentiality. The mediator goes over a confidentiality agreement with both sides. Everyone agrees and that gets entered in court. So there's a record that they did that. Um, and their agreements are pulled up on the screen so that everyone can see what the mediator typed. Everyone can agree that that's what they agreed to. And a Supreme Court rule allows us to sign it electronically. And then the mediation center gets that out to all the parties so that they're not emailing each other with this information. And it's just like a professional streamlined process through the court. Okay, thank you. Great, great presentation. Thank, thank you so you. much. Uh, Member Salman and then Vice Chair Pachowski. Yeah, I just really wanted to thank you for your partnership and for this update. I know we've gotten little sort of trickle updates in HHS, which we've all really enjoyed. But one thing we've talked about in HHS that it's not just so important that we're pre preventing the housing instability in this moment. We're making it so that renters, which are a growing part of the population, home ownership is becoming more and more difficult. 
don't have an eviction mark on their records so they can find great housing in our county. They're not limited. Mm -hmm. So I think what you guys are doing isn't just, you know, fixing the instant crisis of making sure we don't have families who lose their housing, but making sure they can stay in the county and still, you know, rent here. So thank you so much for this update. Thank you. Right. Vice Chair Bachowski. You know, several times you mentioned mutually beneficial alternatives. What are what is the biggest one for the landlord? What's the biggest one for the tenant? I see the tenants more time and the landlords a payment plan that he gets paid. I mean, I don't know is that the case, but what are the most prevalent mutual beneficial alternatives to both the landlord and tenant under this mediation process? Like quick what we're finding is that they would pre this program, they would come in, you have their return date, set it for a trial four weeks out or wherever that fit into the judge's schedule. And now we're seeing because they don't want to go to mediation, they'll come in, they'll get a status date to reach an agreement quicker on their own. Um, and so it's taking the case out of the, the judge's docket and getting clogged up and the landlord getting their agreements entered quicker. Um, the rental assistance funds, there's a lot, sometimes this idea that I don't want that money. I just want them out. And when you start to see that well, by the time you meet, if you mediate, you have a court date, you know, you could, this is the best way you're going to get this amount of money. And it's just a second to let people breathe and explain what a good program this is. And if they don't want to do it, that's fine. The landlord doesn't have to, but the tenant can still apply for the money. And then that's money that they'll have to be able to pay this judgment if it comes against them. Um, the pay and stay agreements, working out payment plans and the um, getting their unit back so they can rent it to the next person um, and doing that all sort of quicker and everyone being in agreement to it, your tenant's more likely to get out on their own faster than waiting for the sheriff to come in and do the eviction. And when you say full agreement, is that an agreement that's been everybody's got what they were bargained for because I know I've seen, well, I need another 30 days. I need another 60 days. And then you, and when you say full agreement, that's where both parties have uh, complied with 100% of the agreement. And what percent of the agreements come back and say, well, gee, I can't find a spot within that period of time. Is that part of the process as well? Because I, I would assume that someone's going to say, I can be out in 60 days. And then they go, wait, I can't do 60 days. I'm going to need another 30 and I'm going to need another 90 days. Is that part of the process as well, but coming back in to try to revise the agreement and something like that? Those are great questions. Uh, so full agreement means all issues were resolved. The parties don't have any issues or meaning but that the judge needs to solve. The judge doesn't find out what the agreement is. It's confidential until the parties enter it themselves. So you know, we'll see situations where the landlord agrees and they have a status date to enter it and if the tenant didn't do what they're supposed to do before that date to enter the agreement, then they don't enter their agreement. Um, if the agreement were to fall apart later on and they have a status date to check in on how that agreement went through, the judge has discretion to send them back to mediation or to say, no, that's that, here's your trial. Um, so the outcome of whether they come back to mediation if the agreement falls apart or proceed on to a trial is up to the judge to decide based on what facts they have before them. Are we getting most cases resolved without having to come back afterwards? Is that, that was, that's the whole purpose of mediation. Hopefully you see them once and you're done. Yeah. You got to go back and get another three months or whatever. We're, we're getting complete agreements where both parties understand that this is it. We're being successful in that. Right. Okay, well, thank you. It's a great program. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Member Eckhoff? I was, you mentioned the money that's used to help pay the judgment and things like that. How much money is there left? I mean, how long is that part of the program going to exist? That's a good question. Their numbers... I should say those numbers are marked for draft that Ida gave community services, um, so they don't public publicize publicate them. But they said there's sixty million dollars total, and I don't remember how much has been dispersed right now. It's escaping me. I can see it in the email I read, <laughs> but I know there's a lot of money left. Um, when I wish, if we're number one, we've given out three point four million. Sixty million for the whole state. Yeah. If you can just let me know. I will. And then the, the mediators that were trained, those were attorneys from the DuPage County Bar Association? They were um, attorneys and our local court rule also provides for if people have a 40-hour mediation certificate, 
um, that they can apply and then the presiding judge of Chancery can decide if they're approved or not. Most of our mediators are DuPage County um, attorneys and mediators. We do have a few from Cook County, Kane, Lake that have come. Well, I just want to emphasize Dave Clark was here from the Bar Association about a year ago whenever we started on this and he said that the attorneys were going to do it and they're going to from the Bar Association give their free time and I wanted to emphasize then and I now that this is a service provided free by the attorneys who often get a bad rap for not helping people and here they're helping people. Mm -hmm. They are paid. Um, we have um, we received ARPA money to be able to pay our mediators uh, two hundred dollars for three hours to mediate three to four cases in that time, um, and we have this large pool of people to pull from. Um, they we had an incredible amount of support from the bar association in planning this program for over. Um, 12 to 18 months and donated their time to help and still are let me pick up the phone and answer questions because they're on the ground seeing what happens every day and it's a wonderful um, mix of everyone from every aspect of these cases to help this you know put our ideas together and make this the most efficient program okay uh, member garcia yeah thank you so much thank you for your presentation today i you know i really appreciate the hard work i think this is a win-win situation for everyone you know, from the landlords to the people who are struggling to pay their rent. Um, I, I just, I, I'm just thrilled that, that we're able to be, or not we, because I'm not doing it, but uh, those that are actually offering their time and you who are organizing it are, are able to help these people who are um, struggling. I mean, it's been such a difficult couple of years and I don't see the light yet at the end of the tunnel for for being able to, you know, because the housing costs are so expensive, you know, and people are having a hard time and the jobs are just, you know, the jobs that pay a living wage, I should say, there are jobs out there, but those that actually pay, that you can actually pay your rent are, are difficult to find right now. So I really thank you that the, you're helping people keep their dignity, keep their homes, or at least help and help the landlords at the same time. So I, I really appreciate this program and everything that you guys are doing. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Member Kajewski, and then Member Ozaga, then we're going to wrap. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I just question on, um, is it just a lack of two-page attorneys? Why we have attorneys from outside of DuPage, Boyle, et cetera, in this mediation? Well, and I know I just heard Grant, Grant Member Eckhoff saying that the Bar Association was offering DuPage to even do this for free. So yeah. it just, is there a reason or how do we, pick the attorneys here? Well, yeah, I think there was discussion early on that there would be a small group of attorneys who could sit outside the courtroom, outside our eviction mediation courtrooms and help people reach an agreement. And then it became clear that the numbers would be there that we needed a more formalized program and an actual mediation instead of just helping people agree. No, I understand that, but the question, why, uh, is there just not enough in DuPage to do it? No, there's an, I would say majority of our mediators are DuPage and we've rejected mediators who are too far or don't have any DuPage pro, like, contact. Um, but we do have a handful, maybe six mediators who don't reside in DuPage County who work or live in Cook or Lake who have been approved because they're phenomenal. Um, but we do have a majority of DuPage County residents who are either mediators and attorneys. All right. Well, I would advocate if there's other phenomenal ones that are DuPage, I'd rather use them than the ones from outside. <laughs> a member of that. Thank you. Uh, just about the compensation. Um, I'm glad they're being compensated. That's great. Uh, was that part of the original ARPA from the state that they could be compensated? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank so you. So the... So the other surrounding counties are paying their mediators as well. And our thought was if all these mediators can go help other counties and get paid for it, we want to be able to attract those seasoned professionals here as well. And I think it's the right amount of money to give them some money for their time. Yeah. Um, but no one's making a living off of, you know, mediating our mediation it's cases. It's lower as than well. their hourly rate, more than likely. Yeah. <laughs> So okay, it, thank it's been you. really helpful. Yeah, that's great. Thank yeah, you. thank you. All right. Well, th thank you, Kimberly, um, Suzanne, everyone. Thank you um, for everyone who's participated in this. I can't imagine anything more stressful than thinking I'm going to lose my home. So um, I'm glad this was the highest priority of both the HHS and JPS committees. 
um, outstanding efforts. The fact that we're number one, I think, speaks for itself. So excellent um, all around, and thank you for presenting again. Um, moving on to, do we have any old business? Member Garcia. Yeah, very quickly, uh, we had a, we had a um, comment here from uh, one of the medical staff at the uh, Correctional Center, and I just wanted to follow up that, that I've been kind of following up with this. I know uh, Chair Renahan has been doing that same thing. And uh, happy to let you know there is some uh, work on getting them hopefully some kind of uh, pay equity increase and try to get, uh, I think they have 19 medical workers there. They have a couple of openings. I'm hoping those will get filled. And I know that there's going to be a bargaining uh, meeting coming up this week. So so uh, we are actually keeping in touch with these people and, and hopefully getting them uh, the, the fair uh hopefully the, getting them the uh, fair raises and fair uh, working conditions that they uh, so desperately have uh, requested. So just want to let you know. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Member Garcia. Um, any other old business? All right, moving on to new business. Um, I just want to touch on something. Um, we saw kind of a procurement issue with uh, what happened with this mobile unit for Merit. Um, Sheriff's Office has contacted me and spoken with Jason and um, staff. Um, they're looking for a, what, board F? 50 um, to pull a trailer. Um, it, it got pulled from today's um, thing just for lack of being able to find one. So new, it would have to go through procurement. If it's a used one, um, something that we could approve. Um, so I'm just asking for, if we can just have a show of hands, um, this is something we'd be interested in discharging committee to, to go forward with, um, to allow them to purchase that. I'm fine with it. Anybody, any? All right, great. Thank you. What, just a, oh, yes. just a question. So question. he's purchasing another. Well, uh, could you repeat what you just said, Julia? I remember, uh, Renahan, Chair Renahan. I'm, I'm, it's a Ford F two fifty to pull a trailer. Jason, do you want to provide a little more info? I apologize. Deputy Chief Bill Adu actually had an eight forty five meeting, so he he just yes. texted me to let me know. Um, yes, he he did call me and Julie. Or I'm sorry, Chair Renahan, um, and indicated they're looking for an, a Ford F two fifty to pull the uh, bomb squad trailer. Um, and this would be. Uh, uh, purchase that they were looking for. Um, however, with the supply chain, as we've been seeing, we did actually do an RFP and procurement, correct me if I get anything wrong. We did do an RFP to try meeting all of the, the guidelines. However, we did not have anybody meet the specs. Um, and at this time, the sheriff's office is looking at some used trucks, uh, not overly used, you know, something that would still be within our guidelines and what's expected for it. Um, and at this time, the bigger issue is by the time we get approval for a used truck, it's off the lot already. So the, the real goal this week and, and in the coming weeks as we can find it is assisting the sheriff's office, maybe finding a used vehicle. And that's what Chair Renahan's asking for is say tomorrow or tonight or this afternoon or something, we find a truck that meets in the ballpark of what we're looking for if we could do a, a procurement um, and have it on the county board and finance agenda on Tuesday and just discharge JPS. I, I believe that's what Chair Renahan was looking for. So that's what the purchase of this vehicle is for. So, so we bought a bomb squad vehicle with nothing to pull it? No, my I understanding mean, is I'm not that following this. my understanding was uh, that they have used DOT vehicles in the past, but the, the problem is, is there's a lag to get one of those vehicles in comparison. Um, and it's a heavier trailer. I, I don't have all the specifics and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Okay. Um, but because of the specialty of what they do with the bomb squad. I, I, I think it, there's some heavier equipment and things like that, that originally they were looking at an F-350 um, is my understanding. However, they were able to, to figure out that the F-250 would pull it, which would decrease the price a little bit as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Member Garcia. Oh, okay. You just give him the thumbs up, okay. All right. Anybody else under new business? Up, uh, Member Kuczynski. Just again, it's in, probably again a campus-wide issue regarding. I think this is going to happen to us a lot here. Where those remember the SARS question, we get staff specking out something, and they say, "Okay, yeah, this is what the quote is," and then by the time it gets through our committees and thing, it's gone. It's like things on the lot. So I don't know, Nick. This is more of a general question for all departments. When we're specking something out and it's there, we need it. It, it could be a month or two before we get through our committees. Staff does all their work. It comes to us, and we now finally approve it. Go back to the vendor, and it's gone because somebody had just there's cash and it's out there. So I don't know if there's something we need to look at on these emergency basis to and be able to. The discussion this morning was was very very timely. Remember to start questions were very good. We've been noticing that among every single department. 
Um, we're seeing right now all of the contracts we have to deliver goods are, are all going up. The vendors are saying we've got to increase because we're losing money because of the price of gasoline. And in public works in a couple of weeks, we're going to be bringing a, a contract through for Stuart Spreading, $100,000 extra, purely because of the cost of gasoline. And these vendors are going to, to, to not honor the contracts because they're losing money. We're seeing it across the board. We're trying to figure out how to be more nimble, how to react quickly, because we still need the goods and services. But a lot of times, like this F-250, we find one and it's gone hours later. We find three laptops, it's gone an hour and a half later. And so we're trying to work with state's attorney and procurement to figure out how do we manage this? O almost every single contract we're gonna have, um, if the gas prices continue to rise, there will be extras brought before this board for every contract that, that we have in place. And, and we're seeing it over and over and over and everything from, from building material to, because everything's related to supply chain, related to delivery, related to the gas prices. And, and that's what we're seeing. We're trying to figure out, I mean, well, it's unprecededened, I, but- you're, I think we need every department. I mean, if there's gonna be ordering stuff normally, like in November, October, they need to start it today to put the order, and, even though it's it's six months and, out. And we are, you saw that in DOT, because yeah. I know that DOT, Chris is moving forward with ordering plow trucks two years in advance because of the supply chain. We are trying to accommodate that, but sometimes the just the procurement guidelines are making it impossible to find it. So we're trying to figure out what is the proper course, how do we do it while still being, you know, uh, being able to 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 justify what we're doing and making it transparent. So we're trying to work through that. And so there will be have to, have to be a, a bigger discussion probably during finance committee or county sure. board because it's impacting every department, every procurement. We I have think in. that maybe is, is a department has something that's an emergency like that, that it just comes on our next finance agenda, discharge committee, if it's an emergency, yeah. if it's there, because we need to get it. Otherwise it'll be gone and now we're waiting or we're trying to buy something yeah. that's not as I, what we need. Like we're trying to get a used truck I, instead of a new one because it'll be a year before we get it. I mean, one. I'll tell you the F-250 is a great example. I, they found one, gone. They found a used one gone. I mean, it's within hours things are, are disappearing. Yeah. Chris didn't transportation. We know we're going to need vehicles replaced in two or three years. Let's do them now and we'll get them in two or three years and, anyway. And, and you're seeing a lot of departments really doing, you know, when a delivery, when, it, when we know something is seven months for delivery, we're going to get it in 23. Although it's a 23 budget, we're ordering it now because we can't, there's no way to guarantee it. And we're seeing that the chassis question that came up before regarding the one, we ran into exactly the same thing with a Vactor we're buying in public works that we ordered it. And a month or two later, they said, we're no longer making that chassis. You're gonna have to upgrade it. So it's just, we're seeing it just constant in everything we're purchasing. Member Chaplin. You know, maybe this, I don't know if we could even use these resources, but maybe like the Illinois Association of Counties or NACO, because we can't be the only county that's dealing with this, right? Other counties, you know, so maybe that might, might be a good resource to see how, you know, what other counties are doing, how they're dealing with yeah. it, or maybe collaboratively working together, you know, and, and, with and them. I, I don't you're know exactly that, spot on. All we've talked to our counterparts in municipalities, yeah. the collar counties, everybody's struggling. I mean, it is a challenge because there's a finite amount of resources that we all want. And, and that's what we're struggling with. It's just until the supply chain issue gets lined up and the volatility to pricing is, is, is something we've never experienced before. Great, thank you. I mean, we, we, we've gone back and forth on this truck. I can't tell you how many times um, between the sheriff's office and the front office procurement and state's attorney. So. We know it's an issue. So thank you for everyone for your input. Um, any additional new business? All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second, all in favor? Aye. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>